Hello and welcome in TensorFlow.js in 3 hours from Pact. My name is Kuba Konczyk and I've been programming since around 1995. And I've started to build a little bit more complex systems since 2006. And my first encounter with machine learning was when I was working for one of the startups and I was asked to create a machine learning model to predict real estate prices. And needless to say, I really failed to do that. I didn't have a lot of time, but I, I didn't actually understood the fundamentals of machine learning. And then after a while, when I cooled down and when I started to have more time, I've started to explore machine learning on my own. And, you know, I decided that I have to share with others what I've learned, especially for total beginners. So this is what this course and other courses is all about, to make machine learning easier. So let's have a look at the course. And uh, we will have six sections here, and in each section we'll cover a little bit of uh, the big picture of what you can do with TensorFlow.js. And we'll start with the very basics. We'll talk about the JavaScript, how to run a simple code, and we will talk about the basic JavaScript elements. So I try to give you the essence of a JavaScript in a very short amount of time. And you have to keep in mind that I highly encourage you to actually check out all of the additional resources that we have for you, because, you know, I couldn't cover it all, but you know, the essence is there. So in section four, there'll be, um, uh, all about the basics of JavaScript and also about TensorFlow.js. So you'll learn how to create a basic template that we'll um, then later on use in the next sections. Then in section two, we'll start with a very popular problem in machine learning, which is image classification. And we'll use a very popular convolutional neural network to do that. And what's cool about it, we'll use a pre-trained model, a already made a model that will help us, you know, classify images really quickly with really not that a lot of code. So this is very cool. Then in section three, we'll switch to different kind of data. Uh, we will work with text. And in this section, I wanted to show you how you can apply the same principles on a totally different data set and also a bit of different problem. So here we will be using a pre-trained LSTM network or model to actually create the text classification mini app. And we will classify the text as positive or negative in the real time. So I think this is also pretty cool. Then in section four, we will switch to totally different data, which becomes really, really popular nowadays and we will look into how we can actually classify sounds. And there are a couple of challenges that we have with this data set, with this type of data, since this is, you know, it's becoming popular, but we don't have that much tools that can actually help us achieve those goals. So I will show you all the shortcuts that I discovered. And in this section, you'll learn, you know, everything you need to know about actually using a pre-trained CNN model to classify sounds. Then in section five, we'll look at a relatively, you know, complex technique, but also very useful. This technique is really all about just uh, leveraging the pre-trained model. So the model that has been trained for hours and hours, we can actually do the transfer training using this kind of model on our own data set can take advantage of what this model have already been trained on. We can just use this knowledge. And in this way, we can basically just, we can just cut the, the time that is required to train our model really significantly. So in section five, you'll learn how to do that. And we'll talk about, you know, how we can achieve this, you know, leverage training, I would say. Then in section six, we'll start from scratch and a lot of principles that we've learned in section five, you will actually see in section six, this is very similar process, but here we have to define the model on our own. The, R, the neural network architecture that we'll be working with, we'd have to define it. So we'll have this additional step. And of course, both in section five and six, you will learn the very basics of training and testing your own models. So what are some prerequisites for this course? 
So I assume that you have some programming experience. It doesn't have to be a lot. I basically just, you know, hope that you have a, a basic understanding. You know, I did my best to actually present to you as simple as I could the examples that we have. So we will cover the JavaScript basics in the first section. But, you know, I highly encourage you to check out all of the additional resources that we have for you. If you get stuck, you know, feel free to check out those resources to actually, you know, do a little bit more research and actually discover what you don't know. And we also assume that you have a very basic machine learning knowledge. I will do my best to actually explain to you all of the basics behind training and testing models. Um, but it's always good to have some experience about that since this is the main theme of this course. And for very specific uh, use cases, when we're working with sound, we'll actually use a Python 3 and Librosa for extracting the information from the sound samples. And this is not absolutely required, but if you want to use your own samples, you would have to have those tools installed and use the script that we've provided to actually convert your own sound samples and test them in a bunch of sections that we are having in this course. So this is it, and I, I can't wait to get started, and hopefully I'll see you in section number one. Okay, take care, and I'll see you soon.